So I'm sitting down with, with Mike Matthews uh, of Electroharmonics, new sensor. Um, basically the, the guy that goes to for tone, as far as I'm concerned. And we were talking about the Softec amps, like how you got into it and why you stopped making them a little bit earlier. It's kind well, of a recap. I, I got into it, you know, like I started, you know, like buying and selling a lot of tools from Russia. And then I said to myself, well, look, if they make the tubes, why can't they make the whole amps in Russia? And, and they, so they did, did get some great sounding amps going. I worked with Tony Bruno on, with one on the MiG-50, another the MiG-60 came out of Russia. Uh, and, and the problem was the amp sounded great, but they had, they, there was a couple of spots where mechanically they weren't secure and they just broke too easy. And you know, like, although initially the stores wanted by thousands of them, you know, once they started breaking, it just killed the market, and, you know, and that was it, so I, so I stopped. Yeah, I have a MiG-100U, you know. I have, a, I have about 10 of each of the old models saved for my you know, grandchildren, great grandchildren. They sound amazing. I mean, like mine's biased a little hot. Um, uh -huh. Just because I never rebiased it when I put so it burns tubes really, but it drives really hard and it sounds. I've just never realized that you could get like such tone out of a 6L6 amp and sound better than a well, JC. You know, the best ones were the mid 30s. You know what? Here's a story on that. The first amp was supposed to be the mid 50. Uh -huh. You know, this was one. A model that I worked on with Tony Bruno, Bruno yeah. amps. So and it really sounded good. So we gave them the MiG 50. Yeah. Make this. They made it, and then their power transformer in the design was not strong enough, so it would sag down to 30. So without telling me, they called it MiG 30. So I got the first shipment over. But those fucking things sounded great. It had like a natural compression distortion, and it was so funky. Yeah. And, and then by the, by the time I went back to them and said, "Hey, these are great," they had already changed the transformer to be to give it the full 50. They were still great amps. They sounded like early Fender amps, but they missed a certain that really unique flavor. Yeah. And they uh, and they uh, and they lost what they were doing on those. So those, those really best ones were the early mid thirties. I don't even know. I've never seen a mid thirty. Well, there weren't too many. Only about about three three hundred of them made. Yeah, I'd love to hear one of them. Definitely. And the mid sixties also uh, pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I like my hundred U. It sounds like a better version of the JCM eight hundred in my opinion. Well, glad you like it. Yeah, well, I mean, like the inputs break. So what? But actually, structurally, like that was the only issue was the inputs breaking for me. Yeah, the only problem is that the air breaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you dig it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what tubes do you use? I, you use 5881s or you use a different tube? I'm using a uh, 6L6. What type? What brand? Uh, groove tubes. Well, groove tubes, you don't know what they're using. Groove tubes just buys, they'll buy when they JJ, they buy a lot of tubes from us and yeah. buy stuff from China. So yeah, I, don't, I don't know which six. Um, but those amps were designed, they hold them. Unless you don't like the tone of the very warm 5881s, yeah. and you wanted more edge, uh, well, the, the 5881 is what, what was used in there, and they're very, very reliable. Yeah, it's uh, it's the, I use the 606 GCs, which are basically the 5881s that you that you guys do, from what I've heard, that you, oh, yeah. that you sell them to uh, group tubes and just rebrand. They just rebrand them. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know. I that was my that was a rumor I heard though. Uh, we sell them a lot of tubes, but we don't sell them 5881s, and we're the only ones that make the ones from Russia, so I don't know. Yeah, what, um, I, mean, I also own an Ampeg V4, so I'm using 7027As, uh -huh. and those, you guys make those, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. It's just really a, basically, it's a 606 with the pins in a different position. Oh, alright. So they're not that much different. They have a different kind of, they sound kind of different, like a little more mid range here than, than most of them. Especially in those amp old Ampeg valve technology, you guys. Yeah, we did make a bass amp called the Bass Off Blues Boy. And that had a sound like 
which I like, which was like the very early Ampeg B15s, which I really like. They're very warm, thick, heavy, yeah. under bass, you know. 